Finally, I'm here. Crikey, that took. I had all sorts of problems with my um, Wi Fi, yes, wireless ergonomic keyboard before I came on, and it's taken me ages and ages to try and get it sorted out. So I'm here, and today I'm talking about um, how misleading food labels can be, and how uh, food marketers are trying to convince us that we need to buy certain food stuffs, and in actual fact, they're really bad for us. So I'm just going to go through some of the most common uh, food labels uh, that you'll see out in your supermarkets. And um, I mean, the moral of all what I'm going to tell you today is always read the labels on the back because that is the only way you're going to have a real honest idea of what is in the packet. And um, also, I would always say shop from the fruit and vegetable aisle. <sighs> an avocado is an avocado. Packaged food has got so much other stuff in it and if you're really committed to um, eating healthier and dining in your nutrition and just sort of up leveling your health and wellness on the whole then buy the, the natural food sources and make your own because an apple is an apple there is it hasn't got other added stuff in it so um, so yeah, I'm just going to go through a few things with you. So first of all, um, you'll see quite a lot of pro products are packaged as heart healthy. Now that doesn't really mean anything at all. There is no defined stance on what heart healthy would actually mean. All it means is that it's got some whole grain in it. That's all, but it only needs to have a fraction of whole grain in it. Which brings me to whole grains, because you'll see a lot of products also are touted as being whole grain. So you're immediately thinking, that's pretty good. I'm supposed to up my fiber and whole grains are healthy for me. The problem is a lot of those products also, they might just have a fraction of whole grain in it. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, say, bread products, they'll actually have other flours in there that have been milled and you know processed to such a degree that the flour actually just acts like a normal refined carbohydrate so it spikes your blood sugars and you don't get the 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 sort of the the low glycemic index benefit of having a product that's supposed to be whole grain thank you for the hearts and um and so just have a look on the label have a look on the ingredients if the first ingredient says whole grain whole whole grain wheat or wh whatever it might be flour then you know you're you're onto a good one you know you're onto a winner otherwise you might want to put it back on the shelf because whole grain i just think is so misleading we're all told we need to eat more fiber um and it's really hard because it's designed to make us buy it but it does us no good you're just filling your stuff your face with stuff that isn't going to be beneficial it's going to spike your blood sugars helps increase that risk for diet developing diabetes too and um essentially makes you put weight on especially belly fat so um the other one is sugars um uh, oh my goodness i mean i think we're becoming more informed about the fact that fats Healthy fats are really good for us. Our bodies actually need fat. Our whole nervous system and brain requires healthy fats in order to function properly. But you'll see a lot of, you know, in, in the sort of, I don't know, the 80s when it said low fat, everything was, instead of putting fat in, they'd stick a load of sugar in or artificial sugars to try it. Because if it's not got fat in it, often it needs, the flavor needs improving. And, and so that's why they'd bunk in a load of sugar. So, um, you know, sugar free means it's probably got artificial sugars in it, artificial sweeteners in there. And actually that's been proven, artificial sweeteners have been proven to have a, have a negative effect on the brain. It's the research is out there showing that that actually happens. So artificial, if you're going to, if you're going to eat something sweet, have a real sugar, go for natural raw sugar or honey or uh, stevia extract. A lot of people don't realize that stevia is a, is a natural product. It's a leaf, it's a plant. Um, so, you know, there are healthy alternatives, sugar alternatives out there. So just be aware, if it says zero sugar, there's probably something else in it. 
The other thing also is you might find things like uh, orange juice, for instance, it says no added sugar. And that might be absolutely true, but they're not talking about the fact it's absolutely jam packed full of naturally occurring sugars. And the same size glass of orange juice has the same amount of sugar in it as a, an equivalent sized glass of, of, I can't, what is it? Is it, which one's the name? Coke. That's not, that's not the actual name, is it? I never drink the stuff because it's, it's rubbish. Bad. It's bad for you. Um, but yeah, so be aware of that. So although it's, it's saying no added sugars, there's still sugar in it and a heck of a lot. Um, with, with sugar, if you want to have orange juice, just eat segments of orange. It's hey, way, way healthier. And the reason it's healthier is because it's got all the fiber. Um, when, fruits are juiced, you get rid of the fiber, which is then, you know, you're, you've got, the fiber helps to slow down that sugar release within the body. So if it hasn't got any fiber, your, your blood sugars are just gonna spike right up. So you want, if you want fruity things, eat the real whole fruit. It's a heck of a lot better for you. And obviously you get that fiber as well. So um, just going on to like sort of a quick guideline for um, carbs and sugars and things like that because you'll see on the back of the packets they'll say uh, total of carbohydrates that's broken down into um, refined carbohydrates and sugars so and fiber so what you want to make sure is that in an ideal world you have a five to one ratio so five grams of sugar to one gram of fiber if you're just getting started with your healthier eating and your taste buds are taking a bit of a bang and you still you know still want to take it you know introduce yourself easier into reducing your sugar and sort of more refined carbohydrates go for a 10 in one so if it's got 10 grams of sugar make sure it's got at least one gram of fiber and that's a really good way of of working out if there's sufficient fiber in it for you so your blood sugars don't go all AWOL and then leave you crashing and burning and feel feeling uh, rotten afterwards another one is now there's quite a lot of uh, information out there and you'll see on a lot of packets it says either nitrate or nitrite free because there's been associations with can the, car the carcinogenic effect etc etc however a lot of those products will you'll see on the ingredients label it will say celery powder or cel celery extract celery is a natural source of nitrites nitrates so you want to make sure if it's got celery root powder in, it's, it's still essentially containing nitrates. So just be aware of that um, if you're sensitive to those and if you want to cut back on that. Um, free range, right? This is the one that really gets my goat the most because there is so much confusion out there. I love eggs. I love, I love hens. I love healthy eggs. There's nothing better than getting an egg that's bright orange and it's flavoursome and the white holds around it nicely. And they're, they're, I think they're quite hard to find these days. So the, this is kind of breaking it down a little bit. The, the bottom line is either have your own hens and treat them really nicely and eat your own eggs because you know that your hens have been looked after and they've been roaming outside. If you haven't got your own, buy pasture raised or soil association organic because that is the only way you're going to assure, be assured that those hens have got access to the access that easy access to the outdoors. So free range, for instance, or there is no maximum amount, legal amount of hens that are allowed to be kept in one barn yard, whatever it is. But so if you imagine you've got, say, 20, 30,000 hens and they're allowed to be called free range because they may have one small opening that allows them into a small outside area. It can mean, if you're lucky, you might get hens that are free range and they're well looked after. The farmer, you know, really cares for the hens and they have good roaming outside, but it is not guaranteed. All they need is a small area and there's no minimum requirement of how long they have to be outside either. And hens are supposed to be outdoors. They're supposed to roam. They're supposed to scratch in the grass. They're supposed to eat bugs. They're not just supposed to be fed on all the stuff that farmers fill them full of in order to increase the egg production. Um, the other thing is cage free. That doesn't mean an awful lot either. Essentially, they can be kept inside 
a barn. They don't have to be guaranteed access to the outdoors and they that's pretty much it. The only difference is they're not in a cage, so they're not crammed into tiny cages. But there could still be thousands and thousands and thousands of hens stuck in this one environment, but they're just not in individual cages. They're technically in a massive, massive, giant cage. Thank you for the hearts. So um, pasture raised is the best way, or again, soil association, organic. Um, the soil association organic eggs, or hens rather, their maximum limit is 2,000 hens and per, you know, establishment. And they have to, I think they have to have a minimum of six hours outside. Um, ideally, they're outside all the time. They, they're looked after as hens would be looked after in the wild. They're brought in in inclement weather. They're obviously given shelter from uh, predators and things like that. But pasture raised and soil, uh, soil association organic are the best way to go. Um, RSPCA assured hens. Now, you see a lot of those in our supermarkets over here, and they're touted as the happy, happy eggs. Um, they can have up to, I think it's 16,000 hens in their coops. That's a lot of hens. So, again, pasture raised or soil association organic is the best way forward for as far as hens go. I just, I saw a man the other day, and it said on the packet, battery caged hens i'm amazed that we're we're, st we're still allowed to sell eggs that have been we shouldn't be looking after our livestock like that full stop it just drives me nuts and i very nearly said something to him and i thought well i can't because it's not my 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 place but it's i think not many people understand how bad free range technically can be so um, either do a bit of research on the types of eggs that you buy or maybe go and buy them from your local farm shop. We have a farm shop local to us and they're hens, they're, they're proper pasture raised hens and you can see them, they're happy, they've got so much space around them and the eggs are amazing. They're the, some of the nicest eggs I've ever had. So um, it does make a massive, massive difference. And if you're, you know, if you're paying for food, you might as well get eggs that are good quality because if the hens have been mistreated if they've not been fed with healthy food the egg that you're eating you know you've got to question yourself why are you eating it because it's not going to have much nutritional value so just be aware of that from the point of view from the, the way the hens are treated but also the nutritional balance that you're getting from those um those eggs so you'll see a lot of uh, products say they help lower cholesterol Again, some products do, but they only need to claim that when they contain a very small amount of whole grains again. Um, the rest can be a load of rubbish. So check the label. If, say, like I, I eat um, porridge oats a lot of the that, that's my breakfast most days is a bowl of porridge oats with cold milk and a blob of Greek yogurt because I like the extra protein on top. And if you have, I wish I brought my oats through actually. Look at the ingredients label for oats. It just says oats. It contains oats. That's the only ingredient on them. And they're, they're massively high in fibre and they tick all the nutritional boxes and they're really good value and they're incredibly good for you and they do help lower cholesterol. So just be aware of it. Um, what else? Oh, um, you'll find a lot of products can say they, they say they contain a good source of omega-3s. So, omega we all eat more omega-6s than we do omega-3s, and omega-3s are incredibly important for our, our brain health, they're, in, they're essential fatty acids that we cannot make ourselves, so we have to get them from our food. And you know, if you're vegan, you may need to take a, an omega-3 supplement, I guess they do omega-3 um, supplements for vegans, but, and a lot of people say, yeah, but I can get my omega-3s in seeds and nuts and, you know, that sort of stuff. You can, but they're only short chain omega 3s. And when you eat short chain omega 3s, the body can only convert about 10% of that into long chain omega 3s, which is what we ideally need. And that's what we get from like our fatty fish, so our sardines, our mackerel, anchovies, um, I think caviar, um, salmon, that sort of fish. So um, if you're omnivorous or pescatarian, make sure you're including 
you know, two to three servings of fatty fish every single week because that will just boost up the amount of omega 3s that you've got and they are essential for our health um yeah nuts and seeds are good but they're not as good as um fatty fish um and portion size is probably the last thing i'd not finish on you'll you'll you might buy like a tub of ice cream and you're just you probably wouldn't eat the whole tub in one sitting but you know our you'll find that if you looked at the back of that it might say serving size is i don't know an eighth of the tub whereas you know with it you naturally think well maybe i could eat a quarter of it the, it is so misleading when you buy packets and small boxes or tubs of things always check the back for the por the portion size because again you're probably eating way more than you should do in a portion size and the, the crazy thing is it's the products that are designed they're tweaked by people in laboratory coats to make you keep coming back for more so you know if you're if you if you've got say like a pack of biscuits in front of you or a small pack of biscuits like a little sort of what you would think is a mini pack and you're, you're busy eating them because you're assuming that's fine that's a portion it's in an individual pack i can eat the whole thing and then you turn it over and it says you know a portion size is three biscuits well your taste buds and your brain are firing off because it's been designed in such a way to make you want to go back for more so um you know it's the it's the it's not just the fact that the 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 labelings are misleading it's the fact it's also designed to make you want to go back for more and more so um I think that's pretty much everything that I've I can think of off the top of my head. Um, heart healthy is another one that often appears. Again, I don't think I've covered heart healthy. Again, it just needs a small amount of whole grains in it to qualify for that title, and that's all. It doesn't doesn't mean it's not full of sugar and it's not full of other stuff. Oh, that brings me. Sorry, I did. I forgot about gluten. A lot of people think that gluten free is healthy. All it means is that it hasn't got the wheat protein in it. And a lot of gluten free products contain tapioca starch or potato starch, which actually metabolizes at a higher sugar level in our body than wheat. So just be aware of that. Do check the labels because you'll find that most gluten, uh, well, a lot of gluten free products are crammed full of sugar and other stuff that you shouldn't be wanting. Okay. So, um, Oh, and also organic. So I'm just thinking, I was in the supermarket the other day and I walked past a pack of cookies and it said organic on them. So essentially you're probably going to pick, you know, if you're a bit health conscious but you like cookies, you might pick the organic pack of cookies off the shelf rather than the non-organic ones. Really, what's the difference? I suppose it's how the wheat's been harvested. But they're still full of sugar. Just because it's organic doesn't mean it's healthy. It, buy the organic produce off the vegetable aisle and organic meat because that, that is where you can score a lot with your health. You, especially if you've got um, uh, the environmental working group, if you check out the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, um, that will give you the updated lists of, uh, you just go onto the EWG website, uh, it'll give you the updated lists of the products that um, absorb the most pesticides and which are the most harmful to us and the the ones that are the cleanest and the the ones that you probably don't need to buy organic mm. and the ones on the dirty dozen you probably do want to buy organic um, so yeah just bear that in mind as well so I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to go over um, and most of all just become a real super sleuth for your own health you know Get into the habit, if you're buying packaged ingredients, get into the habit of reading what it says on the back. If you don't recognise the words, just stick it back on the shelf. Cook your own from home. You will save a fortune if you cook your own. Um, fruits and vegetables are not expensive, particularly if you bulk buy. Um, and support your local farmers. If there's a farmer's market go down, you know that the produce that's going to be there is hopefully you know, is going to be in good quality and and support your local farmers. The other thing, as far as just sort of trying to keep your nutrition 
levels up thank you for the hearts is buy frozen fruit and uh, sorry frozen fruit and fr fruit i i buy frozen fruit for my daily shake and i add frozen veg to my daily shake every single day and most evenings we'll have a lot of vegetables unless it's salad and i'll use frozen vegetables because they are frozen pretty much immediately after they're picked so you're getting much more bang for your buck as far as nutrition goes as well so i'm sort of going off on one a bit but um just become a super sleuth of your labels and if it says all natural and farm assured and organic and gluten free don't assume it's healthy because it may well not be okay so i hope that's been helpful and thank you for joining me if you've got any further uh, wellness tips that you want me to share on my next wellness tips for you wednesday send me a comment or private message and i'll make sure to include it so thank you for joining me and um i will see you soon take care Oops, somebody's just, I've just got a load of messages coming in and they're going over my end live button. You, you've got me for longer. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was so funny. Right, they've gone now. I should click off before they come back. Thank you and catch you soon.